Oh my goodness, why are there so many ways to teach division in fourth grade? Are you wondering how to teach your students or your children division? I know you probably learned like long division back in school and now you're seeing all these different ways and you're like, what in the world? You're definitely going to want to stick around in this episode of Math 345 Support. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy because I create a ton of video lessons for students in grades three, four, and five. But you know what? I thought it might be helpful to start creating these little tutorials for you, for the parents, the teachers, the tutors, basically anyone looking to help students in grades three, four, and five to make math make sense. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. All right, so today we are going to talk about three ways to divide, okay? So we will be talking about a way called the standard algorithm. This is AKA long division. If you recall how division was taught when you were growing up, this is probably going to be similar to the way that you learned. Okay. But now we have other ways and they are not bad y'all. They're not bad ways. Um, it's just a different journey to take to get there. Okay. And the cool thing was something called the partial quotients and the area model, which is very similar to the partial quotients. You'll see the thing about these two is that they're based on place value. Okay. And it, it just, if students are knowledgeable of their multiplication facts, then it's a little bit easier for them to be successful on these two. This is one that they're kind of pushing today in uh, the United States and especially in Florida, which is the area that I serve. Um, before we jump in, students are going to really, really, really struggle with division in fourth grade if they have not mastered their multiplication facts. Okay, now I am working on something right now. It's called Level Up X. It's a multiplication fluency program. Um, I'm not sure when you're watching this, it might be done, but as of right now, if you're watching this relatively recent to when I uploaded it, it's not ready yet. And you're probably thinking, cool, Sarah, thanks for telling me about something that's not yet ready. But I do have something else for you in the meantime, and it's called the Multiplication Mashup. If you go on YouTube and you search Multiplication Mashup, you will see it. It's about seven minutes long. Basically what it is, it's a mashup of songs. So the zeros go to a song, the ones go to a song, the twos, we go all the way from the zeros to the twelves, each factor having their own little snippet of a song to help students be so much faster at skip counting quickly, okay, until they can master their facts. So that's what they're going to struggle with the most, all right? Once students know their multiplication facts, the process for division is not that bad. It's the multiplication facts that will hold them back. So please be consistent. Please show them the way. Do not just say, you need to master your facts because kids don't know what to do with that. We have to guide them. We have to show them how to do it step by step and get there. So the multiplication mashup will help you. It's helped so many kids. I can't, I mean, it's, it's incredible. That's why I'm building Level Up X, which is coming soon or might be out depending on when you're watching this. Anyway, okay, off my, off my spiel there. All right, so back to division. Before we break down the different um, strategies for dividing, let's go ahead and just talk about what division is, all right? Division, let's come back up here. Okay, let's say that we had 2,183 divided by seven. Okay, let's all get on the same page about the parts of division. So right here, 2,183, this is referred to as our dividend. Dividend, okay? It's also the total, okay? It's the total that we are separating, okay? The next one is called the divisor. It's the thing that's doing all the dividing, like divisor is the one that's doing all the dividing, all of the work. We're gonna be using the seven. I'm gonna show you a little like thing to do here. So if you have students that are struggling with multiplication, this is what you have them do real quick. I'm just gonna bust this out. You have them write down whatever the divisor is. Doop, doop, doop. I might need some more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, do at least 10. And then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If they can get all of this in before they even get started, it'll make the process of this particular problem so much easier. So here we go. So we know seven times one is seven, and then add seven is 14, 
plus 7 is 21. And kids can just go 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28. Okay, these are for a strategy for students who are struggling because let's be real, they don't all come in that way. 29, so 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. If they kept going, we would get all of them. And it just makes it so, oops, not 700, <laughs> 70. Just makes it easier. Okay, this is our dividend. This is our divisor. Our divisor is going to be doing all the work. So if we're not fluent, let's bust that out first. And then we are trying to find the answer, which is called the quotient. All right, now that we have all of that, let's go ahead and get started with the different ways to do this. We'll start with standard algorithm, okay? Which is also known as long division. So what we're going to do is take our divisor and that goes outside and the dividend 2183 will go inside the box okay and i go through these steps i'm going to kind of i teach them a lot slower in my student videos but for this sake for the sake of this tutorial i teach them um, how many which is the division step multiply then we subtract bring down and repeat so we're gonna go ahead and walk through these steps right here so we have how many how many sevens does it take to get as close as we can to two well if we look up here our first seven which would be times one is seven which is greater than two so it's going to be zero times for that one multiply zero times seven is zero subtract two minus zero is two and then bring down the next digit, which is one. Repeat, we're gonna start at the top. Okay, how many? How many sevens does it take to get as close as we can without going over to 21? Well, that would be three times, right? Okay, I'm just trying to show you how to use that to prep kids and then go back and use this right up here, right? Okay, 21 exactly, which is nice. We subtract that and then we get zero. Now we're going to bring down, bring down the eight and repeat. How many sevens does it take to get as close as we can to eight? If we go to our chart, as close as we can get is seven. That's one time. So we're going to put times one. That's how many. Now we're going to multiply one times seven is seven. Subtract is one. Bring down the three repeat how many sevens does it take to get as close as we can to 13 without going over back up to our chart well 14 would be nice right but it's too much so just one time which would be seven times one which is seven subtract which is six okay this right here there's nothing else to bring down and right here this number this is going to be called the remainder the remainder and since our remainder six is less than our divisor we're in good shape okay so the answer the quotient the quotient would be 31 with a remainder of six cool and of course you could multiply that to see if it makes sense you could do 311 times seven and then add remember to add your remainder of six right there all right, now partial quotients. I actually like partial quotients. It's set up the same, sort of, as our standard algorithm. And what we do is we put this long little line down, okay, just enough. And we have some steps. I'm going to jot them down here. We're going to do how many multiply zeros subtract and then also repeat how many multiply zeros subtract and repeat so let's do how many how many sevens will it take for us to get as close as we can to two zero right so what we're going to do is just think about the 21 how many times would it take us to get to 21 we've already said three times right this is the how many step 7 14 21 7 times three is 21 and our next step is z z stands for zeros 
So what we're gonna do is put some zeros under here to fill it out, a zero under the eight, a zero under the three, and because we put two zeros inside, we're gonna do two zeros outside. Then S, subtract. When we take away those three hundred sevens, 300 times seven is 2100 or 2100. When we take that away, we've got 83 left. So now we gotta be thinking, okay, how close can I get to 80, right? 80. And I know I could take away 10 of those sevens. If I did times 10, that would be 70. Or if I'm thinking of it, how many times does it take to get from seven to eight? That would be one time, which is seven. Then my zeros, put one zero under the three, one zero inside, so one zero outside. And then I subtract, and that would be 13. Now we can go one more time. We can take one more seven out. So times one would be six. Okay, and we have six remaining, still the same six as a remainder. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take these partial quotients because they are part of the entire quotient and we're going to add them together. So 300 plus 10 plus one would be 311 and our answer would be 311 with our remainder of six, just like before. And again, you can multiply 311, sorry, times seven, plus six, and you will get 2,183. Okay, the next one is the area model, and this one is kind of my favorite. It's very, very similar to the partial quotients method. It's just shown a different way. It's not actually my favorite, but it's kind of like my new, like, oh, this makes sense. I, I can understand why students might gravitate towards this one. So we kind of set it up the same, seven on the outside, but now we're going to make a box, a long box, <laughs> and we will write our dividend inside and we follow the same steps as before so how many multiply zeros subtract repeat watch how many sevens does it take to get to two zero what about 21 though we could get 7 14 21 so that's our how many step now if we multiply we'll get 3 times 7 which is 21 Let's plug in those zeros, because really 300 times seven equals 2,100. And now we subtract. And I should have made this box a little bit bigger. Sorry that I did not. We subtract and we get three and eight. And what we do is we take this 83 and we bring it on up to the top and repeat it now, okay? So how many times does it take to get from seven to 80 to eight. That would be one time. Multiply one times seven, which equals seven. Then we plug in our zeros, one zero here, so one zero here, and that makes sense, right? Because 10 times seven is 70. Now we subtract and we get 13. We're gonna repeat one more time because our 13 can still, remember that division you're sharing equally, so we can still take another share of seven. So let's put 13 there. How many times does it take to get as close as we can to 13? One time, which would be seven. Subtract, no zeros this time, and that would be six. Then we take our 300 plus our 10 plus our one, and we add them together to get 311. And don't forget that remainder. Oh, sorry, it's a little bumpy. That remainder of six. So th those are the three different strategies that are most commonly used to divide in fourth grade and in fifth grade too. Um, the only difference between fourth grade and fifth grade in terms of division is that in fourth grade, we use a one digit divisor and in fifth grade, it's a two digit divisor. So that's that. All right, so I hope that made sense for you. I know it's a lot and you might be thinking like, what, I don't really have it yet. Well, if you don't, I'm gonna point you in the direction of some more videos. Um, you can go to my website, mccarthymathacademy.com. Get yourself a free trial to McCarthy Math 155. And in that, I do break down the standard algorithm, the partial 
quote and the partial quotients. I'm not sure that I do the area model, but the partial quotients are very similar to that there. Um, but if you have another skill, a specific skill that you would like for me to walk through in an upcoming video of Math 345 support, just go ahead and write me a little comment below, or you can email me at McCarthyMathAcademy at gmail.com. That link is below. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, so you can just DM me and say, hey, can you make an up like another video on this topic for math for great for third grade or fourth grade or fifth grade I'm happy to do that when I can like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode I create a ton of math video lessons for students where we walk through step by step by step you'll notice that in that free trial to McCarthy math 155 all right before we go let me remind you that you were born with a special reason you matter and what you choose to do with your life matters too so go out there and change the world in your own special way and I cannot wait to see you on the next episode of math 345 support bye